the, the principle of sowing and reaping applies. So think of a farmer that plants one seed and he gets, say, a seed of an apple. He plants that one seed. You'll get a whole apple. So, so just so, if you plant a seed in the kingdom of God, you will reap a harvest. And God doesn't just give you what you're given. He gives back multiplication. Amen. Our God is a God of multiplication. I don't think you can get that anywhere else. Amen. No, no other religion will give that to you. I can tell you that. Amen. Amen. In Proverbs 19 verse 7, I'm reading at the ESV. It says, Whoever is generous to the poor, lends to the world. He will repay him for his deed. Here we see, we see this in scripture. If you are generous to the poor, the poor person is not going to pay you back. The Lord is going to pay you back. The Lord is going to pay you back. Because he says it's like you're borrowing to me. So he will pay you back for your deed. So we see the principle working together. And we see that the one cannot go without the other. A lot of people will say, man, you must keep it up. You must not, you mustn't look at the other part that says that you're going to get back from God. Don't expect God to give you that. But remember, God has a principle in place. It's called giving and receiving. You cannot just do the one. You cannot just be on the receiving and you've got to be on the giving. Amen. And, and likewise, you can't just give. Because God is going to give it back. Because He set the principle in place. And God is a God of His word. So we cannot change that. God is not going to change His word to suit your narrative, to suit you. So, so always be aware of that. That whatever I give, God is going to multiply back to me. In Luke 18, verse 29 to 30, I'm just going to read it to you. It says, Then He said to them, Truly I say to you, there is no one, no one who has left house, wife, brothers, or parents, or children for the sake of the kingdom, who will not receive many times more in this time and in the age to come in eternal life. Amen. So we see that God reminds us again, and it keeps coming through scripture. Where God, where Jesus used these different parables. He spoke to us in parables, but he was reminding us of the principle of giving and receiving. So Jesus again reminds us that what you sacrifice to God, God will multiply that to you. That is why Malachi, again it's mentioned, Malachi 3, verse 8 to 10, and I think we, this church will be known for Malachi 3. <laughs> because we hear it all the time. But God is speaking to us and says, Malachi 3 verse 8, it says, Will a man rob, rob God? And it says, But you have robbed me. But you say, In what way have you robbed me? And then God said, He tithes and offering. And He said, You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. And then here you see verse 10. He says, Bring your tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And then he gives you a challenge. He's telling you, try me in this, is the Lord of us. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be a room enough to receive it. So again, we see God challenging us with that response. He wants us. He said he will give us multiplication. So, in Galatians 5 verse 18, I'm just going to go quickly through it. It says there, But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Remember that when we gave our lives to Christ, after Christ has brought us, His Spirit came inside of us. So He's going to lead you. He's going to prompt you. He's going to give you instruction. You'll either do it through your pastor or he will speak to you himself. So you are going to be led. And God is going to tell you when you see somebody, God is going to say, Go out that place. Go give them. But many times we want to 
but if we don't see that, we don't hear that, and then we walk away. And then we wonder why life is tight. But God is saying, He's going to help you because He says there that you will be led by the Spirit. Amen. If I read that, it means that we are led by the Spirit. The Spirit is going to lead us, He's going to lead you to do things. So we know that God is going to lead us to do something, and it's going to be our duty. It is our duty to avoid, obey that voice, to obey that instruction that He has given. Remember that we, oh God, 110%. The reason why I say 110%, because you cannot give back to God what God has given to you. Amen. It's in First Corinthians 6, um, 19 to 20. We are told then, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you? Who you have from God, you are not your own. For you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. There God reminds us again that we belong to Him. He has purchased, Jesus has purchased us with His blood. So we belong to Him. So, so everything that you have, everything you have physically, everything you have attained, your job, or whatever, it's God. God gave it to you. And He can say, I want all of it back. But our God is not under. He wants you. He's not going to leave more from you. But He's going to give you a choice. He's going to, it's going to come, but there's going to come a time where He's going to come to you and He's going to say, I want you to have that one and that one and that. And you're going to have to have that. Because that's what His Word says. You belong to Him now. When we gave our lives to Christ, we belong to God. So we like to lay hold of all the nice things in the Bible, but somehow the other part we, we overlook because we want to claim that. But you can only claim that when you walk in the obedience, when you walk in that way, where you stand. So let us not be stubborn. Let us not try to negotiate with God. So whatever we do, if you look at, go back to Malachi 2, 2 Corinthians. I'm going to read it, I'm going to let you turn there again. But I'm, I'm just highlighting, let's look at verse 7. In verse 7, it says there, So let each one give as he purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. He's telling us again that when we become reluctant, when we start to second guess, when we start to doubt, then the gift that you give God is sweet. So, let us not start asking our brothers, what must we do? Do you think I should listen to God? Do you think I should listen to God? What does that mean? It's like, God has spoken to you. You didn't speak to that person who asked me a question. So let us become people that listen to God's voice, not someone else. Because when you go follow what that your brother has told you to do, you walk in disobedience to God. Amen. Amen. And then your giving is not out of generosity. Your giving is not out of out of joy. You give it because you're feeling that you're compelled to. You give it. That's the same as giving what I do. Amen. Because you have not listened to what God has said. So, let us say that we will be cheerful with us. Amen. 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 So, Paul again reminds us that, you, that God loves cheerful giver. So, we're going to be cheerful givers in this place. Amen. 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 So, you, you somehow we think of when, for example, Petty wanted something. And he really wanted this item. So Petty's birthday comes around and you bought him that thing that he's been begging for months for. <laughs> right? And he opens up that gift. Think of the expression on his face and how you felt giving that gift. And likewise, we should be doing the same to God's work. 
Amen. What's an instruction? So when God gives an instruction and He says, you need to sow into the man of God life that I've given you. We need to do it the same, with that same joy that we would do with our own kids. We need to do it with that same zeal, that same urgency, that same thing so that we, when we give to God, we're not giving because we're giving it out of pure joy. I don't want to give. I need to do it because God has given an instruction. And with that instruction, when I follow through with that instruction, I know God is going to bless me. And like I said, God works on multiplication. So remember, God works in a, in a strange way. Whatever you give, He'll give you back more than what you had. But the reason why He's giving it to you is so that He knows He's going to come and ask you again. Listen here, God help that person. So you will have to give. And then when you follow through with that act, again, so we should be living in this consciousness. We should be living this life of multiplication. We should be living this life of giving, being willing givers, because God is going to multiply everything you give back to Him. Amen. 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 So before I close, you, you see in Proverbs 11 24, where Solomon observed this. Um, Thing that he mentions it. Let's just go back down and read it at the end. Amen. Psalms 11, the Proverbs 11, verse 24. It says, One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but comes to poverty. So, like I said, you can give. Your hand is always open. But when your hand is open, your hand is open to receive something. Amen. But when your hand is closed, it's like putting sand in your hand. When your hand is closed. Have you tried carrying sand? It's not going through. So the same thing happens when we become, when we want to clench our fist and say, and put that money in our pocket and say, no, this is mine. I work hard for it, you know. Ah, but you, when God says, hey, I want you to go and bless that person. Go and bless that family that need food. And then you stick the money in your pocket, but you don't say no, that your pocket's got holes in it. <laughs> so by the time you get to wherever, you've got no money. Mm -hmm. And the same principle applies here. You've got to keep your hand wide open. Because God is going to multiply whatever you sow, wherever you sow it. When He tells you to go and sow it, you need to go and sow it there. Amen. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's repent off quickly.
know what? They are desiring cars. But people are not desiring to get the gift of the Spirit. They are not desiring to get the presence of God. Hallelujah. Yet it's the presence of God that will make a difference in your life. The presence of God will give you things people are dying to get in the name of Jesus. When you get the presence of God, you've gotten everything that you need in life. Because the presence of God will produce healing for your body. Hallelujah. The presence of God will produce favor. But you have to hear and desire for the gift of the Spirit. Praise God. I said, praise God. So God is looking for, is seeking and looking for go-getters. 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 Hallelujah. On the gifts of the Spirit. Go-getters. People that are willing to see God. Many people, they don't bother about seeing God. They are living a natural life and they are happy. You can never live a life without the supernatural and be happy. Hallelujah. Amen. You need to experience the supernatural in the name of Jesus. The supernatural should become the expectation of your life. Amen. Can't live a dull life. A life without the experience of God. Hallelujah. Look at Second Chronicles chapter number 16. Second Chronicles 16, verses number 9. Second Chronicles 16, verses number 9. Are you there? Second Chronicles. Just after First Chronicles, Kings, Chronicles, then second. Second Chronicles 16, 9. Are you there? Amen. Look at this. The Bible says this. For the eyes of the Lord ran to and ran to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of those whose heart is perfect toward him. Hallelujah. So that means God is scanning the entire world. God is scanning South Africa. God is scanning Windsor. God is scanning Rampic. God is busy scanning to see if he can find the person whose heart is perfect. That word perfect means whose heart is stained toward God. Amen. And when your heart is stained toward God, you will be yearning, you will be desiring for God. Hallelujah. You will be desiring for the things of the Spirit. So God is cunning. Why is he cunning? He wants to use some women. Hallelujah. You want to use some men, hallelujah. But those whose heart is perfect, that means holy things unto God. W H O L L Y. Holy, wholeheartedly, tend unto God. Hallelujah. Amen. As hallelujah. Amen. But it means that the Lord has not yet found. He has found some. But you want to find some more. And I know we are the sub more in the name of Jesus. I said we are the sub more in the name of Jesus. So God is saying, enough is enough. Step out of the natural. I want to give the supernatural. Hallelujah. Enough is enough of diseases. Come out of and be healed in the name of Jesus. Enough is enough of poverty. Come out and prosper in the name of Jesus. Enough is enough of walking the kind of life. It is time to walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. When last were you filled with the Holy Ghost where you screamed and cried and danced? People are living a dull life. Do you know on the daily basis I'm getting filled up? On the daily basis I'm getting jumped up. Hallelujah. Because I'm hungry. I'm hungry. The same way God wants to fill your spirit and your mind and your body with the things of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. You can never be energized by God and remain sick. Sickness must come out of the pope. Hallelujah. But it says, hunker. So it be hunker. Enough is enough of the natural life. Are you happy in the natural life? <laughs> you need a supernatural life. Hallelujah. But it will never come on you because you want it. It comes because you are hungry. I said, because you are hungry. Hallelujah. Many people are sick in the hospital. Is God healing them? No. So it is his will, but you have to reach out. I say, I have to reach out. I say, I have to reach out. God will never respond to you because you need it. God will respond because you are reaching.
pushing down to it. Many people are wishing healing. They are obeyed. God, I wish you could. Doesn't come by wish. You have to begin to reach out to your heart. Hallelujah. And Hebrews 11, 6 says, God is a water of them that reach out or diligently seek him. Hallelujah. You can never desire God and remain empty. If your heart is genuine, if your heart is panting for God, you can never remain empty. God will fill you up. Hallelujah. God will fill you up. You've got to be hungry. People are hungry for money. If you don't have to say, some they work for extra money, they'll do it. Do you know what? They are hungry for money. That's why they are not finding it. They have misplaced the principle of prosperity. The principle of prosperity is sick faces. I'm telling you, this is the answer. Tell them they work extra. Show us what's money. They have been lacking God. After working extra, now they have been lacking God. It shows that you need to, you, they are hungry for all things. Hallelujah. You must be hungry for God. I said, be hungry for God. I don't want to experience God in their lives. You need to be hungry for spirit food. Hallelujah. Spirit food. So God has told us, covet earnestly the best gift. Hallelujah. Now remember, we said there are nine gifts of the spirit. How many? Nine. How many? Nine. And we have started talking about speaking gifts. I've talked about tongues. I've talked about interpretation within the, the tongues. And today we are going to focus on prophecy. Because they go together. They are speaking gifts. Hallelujah. Next week we are going to start revelation gifts. <laughs> because I want you to know these things. That you can pray. I will flow in them. I say, I flow in them. Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, I flow in the Holy Ghost. And glory to God. Now look at this. In the physical, the proof for health of the body is hunger. When you begin to lose appetite, means you are sick. Am I right? If somebody is sick, do they have appetite? No. Appetite goes. Appetite going is a proof you are sick in the body. Spiritually, if you are not angry for change, angry for the word, for prayer, angry for to read the Bible, angry if you are no longer interested, you die spiritually. Many people they carry the chapter. Why? They are dead. They have got no spiritual enough. How can you call the Lord one day, Tuesday, Wednesday, no Bible, no reading Bible, no prayer? You are dead. You must rise up in the name of Jesus. I said, rise up in the name of Jesus. The proof for healthy body is hunger. Also, the proof of a spiritual health life is spiritual hunger. Amen. We're looking forward to Wednesday. Hallelujah. We're looking forward to Friday. We're looking forward to Sunday. We're looking forward to Sunday evening. That energy to look forward to, to the service, to the word. That's the proof that you are hungry for God. Hallelujah. Pastor told us, don't be mocked. Hallelujah. There are some people that, when they end their prayer, God, I love you. God, I love you. It's very dull. And God says, you yourself and, 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 and you can't even enjoy it. How can I enjoy it? Any spiritual activity you do, you are not enjoying God is not receiving it. The proof that God is receiving spiritual activities, that you are doing, if your prayers has to be accepted by God, you have to do it in faith and must enjoy it. Hallelujah. Some people say, Lord, I praise you. I praise you. I praise you. You are, you are good. You are good. You are. No, 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 no. There must be that expression. Hallelujah. Because you are hungry for God. People read it out like a novel. That's for pain. Hey, 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 say that's one. Hey, 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 say that's one. No hunger. But I want to hear from God. Hallelujah. But you say, Lord. Talking to me, hallelujah. Now, as I read, Lord, talk to me, hallelujah. And then you're praying the Holy Ghost and you are reading louder and respecting every word and see.
whispering and pausing and reading louder and praying with the Holy Ghost, allowing God to talk to you in the name of Jesus. That anger is what causes God to jump out of the page of the Bible and begin to talk to you in the name of Jesus. May God talk to you in the name of Jesus. I say, may God talk to you in the name of Jesus. Yesterday, my meditation, I'll show you when the Lord showed me that just carry the testimony of Jesus. Then the angels who, who sees that the testimony of Jesus is carried well, you will bring people and it's going to increase the people and bless them. Hallelujah. Just carry the testimony of Jesus. He jumped on the page last night. Jumped on the page last night. There, that works. It's not easy. Hallelujah. As hallelujah. Now look at this. So today we are focusing on prophecy. We different kind of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. We say they are speaking gifts. You remember that? They are what? Speaking what? Gifts. And they are unlocked in the same way. Do you see that? So do you see that? Now, what is prophecy? What is prophecy? What is prophecy? Prophecy simply means utterance. U W T E R A N C E. Utterance by inspiration. Utterance by inspiration. Or speaking by inspiration. That means it's not coming from your head, it's coming from your heart by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Speaking by inspiration, like you see. Did you see it when we were, we were sitting here? By inspiration, I began to prophesy what God is saying for this church. It was by faith, speaking through the, it's not coming here, it's coming from the Spirit. Hallelujah. That is prophesying. So, prophecy is utterance or speaking by inspiration. Every time you stand in front here, you are teaching the word of God by inspiration. You are prophesying. Hallelujah. So right now, I'm prophesying in the name of Jesus. Every time somebody is standing here and give a testimony, not from here, they begin to give a testimony. I was sick. I was almost dying. And God healed me. Now, now so long as from here, it's from here, they are prophesying. Hallelujah. Actually, testimony time is prophecy time. As long as they are coming from the Spirit. If it's coming from the Spirit, you are prophesying. Hallelujah. That is why every believer should prophesy. Would you prophesy? Thank you. Hello? Amen. But not everybody can predict. That is where Revelation gifts comes in, in terms of word of wisdom. Because a prophet in the office can predict. That one is an office. But now it comes to just prophesying, speaking by inspiration. Everybody in the kingdom of God must prophesy. I said, must prophesy. When you find yourself with your problems, you feel like quitting heaviness around you by faith. Don't cry. <laughs> go now, where are you go. I'm going to walk with these things. I'm tired. By faith, people say, I've got the life of God inside of me. Everything is turning around for my good. Hallelujah. The Lord is on my side. Hallelujah. I'm going to walk up victorious in the name of Jesus. That is prophesying. You are prophesying the scriptures at that time. You are prophesying by faith. Hallelujah. So do you see can prophesy at the time? By faith. So prophecy can be like right this. Prophecy can be in a non time no K A N O W A non time. That means it can be in Zulu. And like I was present, I was present right now in English. How old time? How live? That's prophecy. In a non time. Hallelujah. Also, prophecy can be in an unknown tongue. Speaking in tongues is prophecy in an unknown tongue. Unknown to you. So actually, every time you are praying in tongues, you are prophesying. Remember the Bible says you are speaking secret.
secrets that is prophesied. Maybe you are saying, Lord, all the people who want to kill me, all of them, I scatter them. All of them, I scatter them. As you are praying in the spirit, you know, you, you didn't know that that's what you are praying. Oh God, about my, my job, about my job, remove that bad boss there. You didn't know that you prayed it in the spirit. All of a sudden, that boss was traveling you. is out in the name of Jesus. But you prayed it in the spirit. You prophesied it. God has given us the privilege to prophesy this place. Hallelujah. That's hallelujah. It's a mystery. Hallelujah. So prophet simply means anointed actors or inspired actors. Are we together now? Are we together now? I'm very fast because I've got things to touch. Now write this. Speaking in tongues is prophecy in an unknown language. Also, tongues plus interpretation equals to prophecy. That one comes for ministry. Did you hear that? When I speak in tongues and I interpret to the church or to you, it came for ministry. Did you see that? For what? Ministry. For what? Ministry. So, should every believer desire to pray in tongues and interpret? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. When you pray in tongues, desire that God I want to interpret. And I'm telling you, you are going to start sensing that ability to start interpreting Yield by faith and begin to interpret. That's how I do it. It's by faith. Hallelujah. Remember when I said I want to worship God in the spirit? During our worship time, do you remember that? I began by faith. I'm going on the way. It, it was by faith. You steer, that's what the Bible says, steer the, the kids from God. You steer. The Holy Ghost is always with you, but you have to steer him to experience him. Hallelujah. As a steer to experience him. Hallelujah. Did you see him? And I began by faith. I'm going all the way. It's by faith. I start and begin to change. The level of faith I'm speaking into is the level of divine presence I'm beginning to experience in that time. Hallelujah. So it's you can activate the presence of God you want to see. It's not God. How much of God you can experience? It's not up to God. It's up to you. Mr. Oster, do you see this? So you can sit in your chair and just begin to <laughs> prophesy. Lord, you are the strength of my life. You are the one who has been so good to me, so good to me. Everybody should sing, but not everybody should record. <laughs> everybody should sing, but not everybody should produce a mama. Say I'm a singer. Say I'm a singer. Don't say I'm a voice. God wants you to be that you. You can never come up high in your prayer life if you don't know how to sing in, in English and in tongues. Because that's a higher level of prayer. That's a higher level of prophecy. Are you hearing me, people? It's in that dimension you're going to start touching big things in the spirit. So sometimes I'll just go. Hey, I'm a
you see that? Amen. I said, did you see that? Amen. Revelation 19, 10. The last part. Revelation 19, verse 10. The last part. The last part. Revelation chapter 19, verse 10. Look at the last part. Are you there? <coughs> Revelation 19, 10. Are you there? For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of death of prophecy. Did you see that? Every time you are testifying Jesus, you are prophesying. Amen. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, what is the purpose of prophecy? Prophecy has got three, three, three things to, to achieve. Why prophecy? Why prophecy? Why prophecy? Number one. Number one. Prophecy brings edification or beauty up. Edification. So when I come and come start the church, something from the Holy Ghost, it will build up the church. It will build up the church. Prophecy. Like when you come here and exhort people and they are built up, we are prophesying to them. Hallelujah. So prophecy brings edification. I'll give you this one. Number two. Prophecy brings Exhortation, exo, e x h o, exhortation or encouragement. Did you see that? That's why every time you come to church, you must leave built up and you must leave encouraged all the time. If you never left built up and encouraged, something is wrong with you or something was wrong with the teaching. But in most cases, it will be you, the receiver. So, edification, encouragement, or education. Number three, prophecy brings comfort. So, every time you go to church, you don't have these three things. There was, there was no prophecy. <laughs> Building up, encouraging up, and comforting. Hallelujah. Comforting. If you started the Bible and you didn't get these three things, you didn't start the Bible. Every time I leave my Bible study, I leave, I leave built up, I leave in college, I leave comforted. Hallelujah. Amen. Last night I was comforted. The scripture jumped on me. He said, carry the spirit of testimony because that angel is looking for where the testimony of Jesus is being carried. Hallelujah. Amen. So I left charged up. So every time you do things of the spirit, these three things must happen in your life. Built up, encouraged, comforted. First Corinthians 14, 3, look at this. First Corinthians 14, verses 3. Are you there? First Corinthians 14, verses 3. The Bible says this. First Corinthians 14, verses 3. Are you there? Amen. The Bible says this. But he that prophesy speak not unto men. Did you see that? Sp oh, sorry, sorry. Speak unto men to edification. Did you see that? And exhortation. Did you see that? And what? Comfort. Three things. So every time prophecy is coming, it's coming to who? It builds you up. It's coming to exalt you. It's coming to what? Comfort you. So every time you come to the house of God, these three things must happen in your life. Amen. All the time. And I want to this after this morning, you are being comforted. Amen. You are being built up. Hallelujah. You are being incarnate in the name of Jesus. Do you see that? Amen. Every time you are challenged and you begin to sing by faith. Prophesy, the presence of God will come. What will happen? It will build you up. It will carry 
comes. Hallelujah. And it will come for you. All the time. I say all the time. You are challenged when you pray in tongues. There are so and as you do it for a long time, you are going to sense a building up. You are going to sense an exhortation. You are going to sense a comfort. Hallelujah! All the time. All the time. May we comfort it. May we comfort it. In the name of Jesus. Are you being blessed? Now, write this statement. Tongues differs in purpose, function, but same in the essence. Essence means source. Tongues differs in purpose and function, but same in the essence. That means source in essence. The essence of something. It's source. It's origin. The origin is the same, but function, tongues, differs in purpose and function, but same in the essence. I'm about to make, I'm about to, to, to review something. So, the function of speaking in tongues for ministry can be different. Either maybe to save someone, or to warn someone you're about to die, or to, or to warn someone repent, for example. That could be the function. But the essence is the Holy Spirit. Or oh, I can speak in tongues of angel to build myself up. The function is, is, is not the same. But the essence is the same. The Holy Ghost. Do you see that? Amen. Are you understanding that? Amen. So that's what you need to understand. Now listen carefully. I told you last time you said how many tongues are there? I said two. But after I made it clear, the, the way I explained it, the Lord added to me. I need to go deeper when I said two. I need to rectify them. Listen carefully. You see everything we are learning from the Lord. So the one who says sign down, you remember that? Sign down, which was experienced in Acts chapter 2, verses 4 to 11. When the Holy Spirit came on them, they spoke in tongues. Which other people hated them? Did you remember that? They were not understanding, but the people who hated them, they were understanding. Hallelujah. That's the sign time. It comes for a purpose. It comes for a function. You remember that? It's a sign time. I can speak Africans, but the Holy Ghost, you know, you know, you know I cannot speak Africans. But I speak in Africa for one minute constantly. Ah, it came for a function, for a purpose. It's a sign time. You hate, I hate you. Do you see that? So do you see that? May you flow in that in the name of Jesus. I said, may you flow in that in the name of Jesus. So God can use you when you go to a place where people don't, don't speak English, know how to interpret. He can, he can move on you and you speak in their language. Hallelujah. And communicate salvation to them in the name of Jesus. Praise God. I said, praise God. Number two time. Number two kind of time. It is called ministry tongue, right? I think that's what I did mention. Ministry tongue. This is where you can speak in tongues and interpret. Do you see that? Ministry tongue. Where the person can stand for example in front and speak in tongues, speak in tongues and then begin to interpret. That is ministry tongue. It comes also for a function and for a purpose. It's all about prophecy, do you see that? So, sign down, ministering down, they are all connected to what? Prophesy. Helping people for purpose, for function. How do you Number three. Number three. Pray dog. Pray dog. This is the one you do alone in your car. And now, do you see that? That's a venture. You do alone in your car, you do alone in your car, you do alone in your house, alone. you do alone when you are sweeping, you are praying the Holy Ghost. These are praying tongues, praying tongues, praying tongues. They come for the purpose of you speaking mysteries to God, building up yourself, experiencing the supernatural. Do you see that? It comes mostly for personal care. So praying tongues are for personal care. Personal care, hallelujah. Personal care, hallelujah. Personal care. Personal care. So if the whole church we prayed in tongues, we did pray in tongues. But
But if by the Spirit of God I stand and interpret, there was also ministry tongue. Did you see that? Yeah. So that's what you can see now. Uh, these are the three kinds of tongues you have. Sign tongue. Can you explain to people? This is the tongue you speak. In the language someone can understand, but you don't you understand. It comes for function and for purpose. This is the tongue. So you speak in a tongue that all people can understand, but you interpret by the Holy Ghost. It's a ministry tongue. Are we together? Pray in tongues while you just pray. Hallelujah. Let us pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and build up yourself and enjoy it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And, and then after praying, hear the voice of God. And then experience the presence of God. It's for personal care and personal advancement. Did you understand? Did you get that? So, Praying times, you find that in June 20, he says, Beloved, building up the soul, building up the soul, the most holy thing, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Hallelujah. Pray in the spirit. Ministry time is the one I want to find, first Corinthians chapter 12, 27 to 31. I think I need to read this one. Because many people that have come to explain wrong on this one for ministry time. First Corinthians 12, 27. To that, look at this. Now you of the body of Christ are members in particular. Look at this. And God has said, Son in the church. First, what? Apostles. Did you see that? Secondly, what? Prophets. Thirdly, teacher, teachers. And after that, what? Miracles. Then what? Gifts of healing. Then what? Helps. Then what? Governments. Then what? Diverse kind of tongues. Now, this kind, this kind of tongues here, listen carefully. They are ministry tongues. All these gifts mentioned here are ministry gifts. They are ministry gifts. Ministry gifts. He is not, he, 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 he's not talking about these normal tongues with prayer of angels. It's not about tiger sky. You know what he's talking about. Ministry tongue. God is about to give us questions here. Look at this. Are all apostles? Is it, is, it, is it an apostle? No. Do you see that? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Are all workers of ministries? Are all the gift of healing? No. Do all speak with tongues? No, nah, that's what people they say. The answer is no. But I've said never to speak in tongues. What time? Ministry talk. Does everyone flow in that? Do you see that? But everyone can flow in the tongues of any of angels. But does everyone flow in the tongues of, of, of ministry? No. But and that's what people say about. Ah, if somebody if everyone can't speak in tongues, then it means these tongues are done. But no, you can't go like that. Do you get it? So do all speak in tongues? Do all speak in tongues? So you can just make it like this. Are we being blessed? Amen. So we see here already that these are ministry gifts. Just take a survey. 
take a survey, ask people go to church, ask them about these things. It's not. That's not how can you become effective? Produce it. Many people, they don't have this understanding. Now, write this. The level to which you are willing to flow in the gifts of the Spirit and the level to which you are willing to yield is the level to which you can prophesy. So it's not time determines your level of prophecy. It's your willingness to flow into it and to yield. That's what I, what I tell you, pray times. Pray times. I'm assisting you to yield your mouth on time. Because when your mouth is yielded to pray in times, it will be very easy to yield to prophesy. Because your mouth has been yielded to speak in tongues personally. So the time to prophesy is easy to flow because you've already yielded your mouth to speak in what? In tongues. That's what I want to start with the flow in the prophecy. Because I've yielded my time to speak in my tongues. When you're driving your car, speak in tongues. When you're going to wake, let me pray. Don't let it be louder. This one is the inside of my mouth. My spirit is praying. You can, you, you, can, can you see me? Everybody? I'm walking, but you can't tell. Look at me. Look at me. Everybody. Look at me. Everybody. Inside, I'm speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. But did you see my mouth go like this? No. Can break it to people. 
you. Then you become a disciple in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. By faith. Amen. 
Did you see that? Mm. Like a poetic type. It's not coming here and say, ah, 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 ah. It's just flowing. But you are yielding. You are speaking. My faith is giving you the utterance. It's called prophecy. That's what Elizabeth did. You need to flow in these things. There are times when I'm praying alone in the room. Then I'm going to by faith I will you. Stand. I'm going to use you. I'm going to do. The Lord is speaking through my mouth. I'm just yielding. Amen. Are you seeing that? You need to start to benefit. You need to start walking in such kind of things. She was filled, but she would have just ended there. But she became. Have you ever seen what I'm talking to the phone? I'll just quickly check the door and say, Now that says the Lord. And I began to prophesy by faith. It's not coming here. You can listen that it's not coming from the start. Mine, because it's quickening. It's life giving up. You are the one speaking, but the utterance is from you. But by faith, you are you. That's why I don't prophesy about anything about your life. It's coming from you. Did you see that? Did you see that? She was filled up, but she began to bless Mary. Whatever she was blessing Mary, did she know about it? No. She's speaking by faith. Look at this. And where? Where is this me that the mother of my Lord will come to me? How does she know? By faith. Now, do you see that? <laughs> She's prophesying by, like, I, like I was saying. I haven't forgotten about the Lord. Can you remember what I was saying? Government will just come here. But I can recall what God was saying. I can't speak down it as cross. But that time I was under the influence. And I was just yielding to the influence. What did you see these things? 100% of many changes don't know these things. I'm telling you. And people are not being placed at all. People want to change. And they clap back. No spirituality. Do you know why? No doctrine. Are you seeing the work we're doing here? Look at that. After she was done speaking, Mary was of my faith. She began to prophesy. Look at this. And Mary said, and you see that, by faith. The near come other us, a prophet 
very experienced in the things of the Spirit. He came and took the belt. That says the Holy Ghost. They are now speaking. That says the Holy Ghost. Different from the disciples who are just getting impressions. But they have been adding all things. So can you hear from God correct and add all things? Yes. Because your children are to yield. That's why questioning the prophecy. Because the source is correct, but the yielding can be wrong. But this is why I say, the Bible says, judge every word, prophecy. Somebody can tell you, go to the name, you are going to prosper them. They will check it, check it. If you don't have that witness, don't go to the name, you are going to die. Where is the problem speaking? Hallelujah. Because God can speak right, but the yielding can be what? Wrong. Amen. There's nothing with God, the yielding was wrong. So other of us came and said this. That says the Holy Ghost. Now this man was very experienced. He knows that we yield to the Holy Ghost. That says the Holy Ghost. The owner of this belt shall go to Jerusalem and shall be killed. He didn't add, don't go. Because the man experienced by the Holy Ghost. It is true. He said, which what God has confirmed to Paul. But he didn't say don't go. Because that was the Holy Ghost. For God to go and preach to kings. When he called him, he told you, you will preach to Israel, Gentiles, and kings. So Paul.